Hi, this is uh, uh, my uh, third lecture uh, on uh, polynomial regression, and uh, here is the uh, content of this uh, topic. Uh, so, polynomial models in uh, one variable, uh, orthogonal polynomials, uh, piecewise polynomial fitting and uh, polynomial models in two or more uh, variables. So, we will be talking about this uh, polynomials uh, in two or more variable today. So, uh, in the previous uh, classes we have studied uh, polynomial in one variable and uh, we know that you know polynomials uh, are used in situation when the response uh, variable is nonlinear and uh, we have studied how to fit uh, a kth order polynomial uh, using orthogonal polynomials and also we have studied uh, uh, piecewise uh, polynomial fitting so piecewise uh, polynomial fitting is used in situation when uh, a lower order polynomial does not uh, fit the given data properly but uh, increasing the order of the polynomial does not improve the situation uh, substantially so this indicates that uh, the response function it behaves you know differently in, in different part of uh, of the range of x so what we do in you know, a common approach to uh, deal with such situation is that we uh, divide the range of x into uh, several segments and uh, we fit uh, an appropriate uh, curve in each segment. So, we talked about uh, all these things you know in the previous uh, classes. Today, we will be talking about uh, polynomial uh, models in uh, two variables. Okay. So, So, polynomial models in uh, two or more variables. Uh, so, second order polynomial model in two variables is uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 1 1 x 1 square plus beta 2 2 x 2 square plus beta 1 2 x 1 x 2 plus epsilon. So, this is a second order polynomial model in uh, two variables. Okay. So, here the linear effect uh, parameters are uh, beta 1 and uh, beta 2 and then quadratic effect uh, parameters 
are uh, beta 1 1 and beta 2 2 beta 1 1 beta 2 2 and then the interaction effect parameter is uh, beta 1 2. So, here we usually call the regression function expectation of y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 1 1 x 1 square plus beta 2 2 x 2 square plus beta 1 2 x 1 x 2. So, this is uh, called a response surface. Okay. And uh, so, this uh, response surface is uh, uh, used uh, in industry to for modeling the response uh, variable in terms of uh, controlled variable like the regressors variable. So, they have you know huge application in industry. So, we will we'll be talking now how to uh, fit a, a second order uh, polynomial model in, in two variables. So, for that I will give an example, I uh, will I'll, I'll talk about the fitting of second order polynomial in two variables by using an example here. Uh, so, this, this is you know chemical uh, process uh, example and uh, here x 1 is a regressor variable x 1 and x 2 are regressor variable. So, x 1 stands for the temperature uh, reaction temp temperature and x 2 e, uh, stands for concentration and uh, the response variable y uh, it stands for uh, percent conversion of a chemical process. Okay. So, well, we have two regressor variable and we have one response variable and we are given some data we have to fit a model like this. Okay. This is a second order polynomial model in two variables x 1 and x 2. So, uh, anyway I mean this one is nothing but a multiple uh, linear regression model uh, like y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, here uh, x is the a coefficient matrix or design matrix sometime we say. So, here the first column is corresponds to beta naught I mean or say x naught here and then the second column is corresponds to x x 1 and then x 2 then x 1 square x 2 square and then x 1 x 2. Then how do you get this uh, matrix? You are given x 1 here. So, the first column is corresponds to this uh, x 1 values, uh, you are given the x 2 values also. So, the second column uh, or the column associated with x 2 is corresponds to this uh, column and then you can compute x 1 square, you can compute x 2 square and you can compute x 1 into x 2. So, 200 into 15 for the first observation. So, this is how you get the uh, coefficient matrix x and then this one is uh, same as you know multiple linear 
regression y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where beta is beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, beta 1 1, beta 2 2 and then beta 1 2. So, you have to estimate uh, uh, this uh, coefficients and you know how to do that. So, beta hat is nothing but x prime x inverse x prime y. So, you know x matrix, you know y. So, you can compute uh, beta hat, right. So, here is the fitted model now. So, uh, these are the, this is beta naught hat and uh, this is your, this is the fitted model uh, for this uh, chemical process example. And then uh, here is the ANOVA table for this one. So, we had uh, there 12 observations. So, that is why uh, SS total has degree of freedom uh, 11. And as you can see here that uh, uh, there are 6 parameters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and uh, that is why you will have uh, 6 restriction on uh, residuals. So, there, there are uh, total uh, 12 residuals uh, because there are 12 observations and uh, on this 12 residuals uh, E i you have uh, 6 restrictions. So, so, you have the freedom of choosing 6 uh, residuals uh, independently and then the remaining uh, have to be chosen in such a way that, uh, that uh, they satisfy those restrictions. So, that is why the residual degree of freedom uh, is 12 minus 6 which is 6 again and uh, the regression degree of freedom is 5. Okay. So, you know how to compute this uh, residual, you know how to compute this uh, uh, regression, SS regression. Okay. So, this SS regression, uh, it involves sort of uh, SS regression due to beta 1 plus SS regression due to beta 2 plus SS regression due to beta 1 1, beta 2 2 plus beta uh, 1 2. So, this is the total SS regression and uh, then you have the MS residual here and here is the F statistic. What it does is that it, it test uh, this F statistic is used to uh, test the significance of this model, whether this model is significant. That means, whether the parameters are significant. So, uh, test for the significance of regression, uh, whatever you have fitted, uh, which is same as testing uh, the hypothesis that beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta 1 1 equal to beta 2 2 equal to beta 1 2 is equal to 0. So, all of them 0 means the null hypothesis th says that the uh, regression uh, fit is, is not significant and uh, the alternative hypothesis H naught here, uh, H sorry alternative hypothesis H 1 that says uh, no H naught is not true. That means, uh, the fit is uh, significant. Okay. So, in order to test this null hypothesis, you have the F statistic and uh, which has value 58.86 and now uh, this follows F with degree of freedom 5, 6 and you get the tabulated value from the uh, F table that is 4.39. So, uh, the observed value is greater than the tabulated value that means the that means uh, h naught is rejected which which says that uh, the the regression fit uh, is 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 significant okay so so 
overall the whatever model we have fitted uh, like you no know, second order polynomial uh, involving two variables that model is significant. Now, what we are going to uh, do is that we are we will be uh, uh, testing whether uh, what is the contribution of the uh, linear terms, okay? what is the contribution of beta 1 and beta 2. So, uh, that is that is what uh, uh, we will we'll test the significance of the linear terms in in terms of beta 1 and beta 2 and then we will be testing the significance of uh, the quadratic terms. Okay. So, to test the contribution or significance of linear terms of the model. What we have to test is that we have to test the null hypothesis H naught that uh, beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0, because beta 1 is the coefficient of x 1 and beta 2 is the coefficient of x 2. Uh, so, if this is true that means, if the null hypothesis is true then, uh, then the contribution of the linear term is not significant against the alternative hypothesis h 1 that uh, h naught is not true. Okay. So, to test this one, we need to find S s regression due to beta 1 and beta 2. So, this is the contribution of beta 1 and beta 2 in total S s regression. So, S s regression due to beta 1 and beta 2 in the presence of beta naught. So, this measures the contribution of of first order terms to the model. Okay. Uh, so, how to get this one uh, is that uh, you fit a model, you fit the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. So, you fit the this model to your given data x 1 x 2 y. So, you are given x 1 x 2 y for for uh, so you have several observations on x 1 x 2 and y. Here specifically you have 12 observations on x 1 x 2 and y. So, you fit this model on the given observations and then the regression sum of square for this model is basically this quantity S s regression beta 1 beta 2 given beta naught. So, how to get uh, S s regression due to beta 1 and beta 2 given it is uh, given that you know beta naught is in the model. So, basically to get this 
SS regression, you have to fit this model and then you find the SS regression for this model. Okay? That SS regression for this model, you know how to do that. right? So, SS regression for, for this model is same as SS regression due to beta 1, beta 2 in the presence of beta naught for the model we considered like you no know, uh, second order model involving two variables. Okay. So, uh, this can be uh, uh, found that this is equal to 914.4 with uh, degree of freedom 2. Maybe I will explain why it is 2. Uh, so, the F statistic is uh, is so uh, why it is two you, you can uh, construct uh, ANOVA table for this one the total total degree of freedom is 11 that is total and then uh, the residual residual has uh, degree of freedom uh, 12 minus 3 uh, that is uh, 9 that is why uh, the regression degree of freedom is 2 for this model. Okay? So, the F statistic is uh, 914.4 by 2 by 5.89. Okay. Uh, so, but this test is for the full model and the MS residual for the full model is 5.89. So, this part is just to explain how to get uh, SS regression due to this um, in the presence of beta naught. So, this is the MS residual and uh, this is equal to 77.62 and uh, you now this follows F distribution with uh, degree of freedom 2 and 6. right? So, you find the tabulated value 0 0.0526 from the table that is equal to 5.14. So, you see that the observed value is greater than the tabulated value. So, which implies that uh, H naught is rejected and H 1 is accepted. Uh, so, H naught is rejected means uh, beta 1 and beta 2 are not equal to 0. That means, uh, the linear term contribution uh, is significant. So, which implies linear terms contribute significantly, significantly to the model. Okay. So, we observed that the uh, contribution of linear terms uh, is significant in the model. Now, we test for uh, the significance of or the contribution of the quadratic term to test the contribution of quadratic terms. given that the model already contains the linear term. To test this thing, uh, the contribution of the quadratic terms given that the model already, the model already contains the linear term we have to test the hypothesis that uh, 
beta 1 1 is equal to beta 2 2 is equal to beta 1 2 is 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that H naught is not true. Okay. So, uh, I hope that you can recall the model. So, the model we are considering is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 sorry beta 1 x 1 beta 2 x 2 plus beta 1 1 x 1 square plus beta 2 2 x 2 square plus beta 1 2 x 1 x 2 plus epsilon. So, this is the full model. Now, you know uh, how to test this hypothesis using the uh, technique of uh, extra sum of square. right? So, the F statistic for, for testing this hypothesis is equal to, I will use the notation that uh, S s regression due to beta 1 1, beta 2 2, beta 1 2. So, the S s regression due to beta 1 1, beta 2 2 and beta 1 2 in the presence of the linear model, uh, linear terms in the model that is beta naught, beta 1 and beta 2. This is what we want to test. I mean this is the notation for S s regression due to this quadratic term in the presence of linear term by M s residual and of course, I need to uh, divide this by the degree of freedom that is uh, 3. I will explain why it is 3. Now, uh, this one is this regression you know, S s regression due to this quadratic term in the presence of linear terms. This can be computed using the extra uh, sum of square technique. So, what you have to do is that you compute S s regression for the full model. Right. So, you compute the S s regression for the full model, this is the full model and uh, we already have that, we have a uh, ANOVA table for, for this one. Okay. So, so, this is the S s regression for the full model. Right. Now, what I will do is that, now this minus S s regression for the restricted model, restricted model. What is my restricted model? My restricted model is the model under H naught that is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. Okay. So, S s regression due to this model is nothing but S s regression the under the restricted model. Okay. By M s residual. Now, you can uh, see just now we have both the uh, things. We have S s regression for the full model from the ANOVA table that is 1733.6 and for the restricted model also uh, we have it uh, that is uh, just now we computed that is 914.4. Now, this has uh, degree of freedom 5 and this has degree of freedom 2. So, the difference is uh, 3 that is why you have to divide it by 3. So, this by 3 
by M S residual is 5.89, uh, which is equal to 46.37. Now, you check uh, the tabulated value, uh, this f follows uh, f distribution with degree of freedom 3, 6, 0 0.05 level of significance. So, this one is nothing, this is you will get this value from the table, uh, from the f table that is 4.35. So, you can see the observed value is uh, greater than the tabulated value. Uh, which implies that the null hypothesis is rejected. That means, this coefficients are uh, significance. So, uh, the final conclusion is that uh, so this implies that the quadratic terms contributes contribute significantly to the model okay so uh, we have uh, observed that you know uh, uh, well so we, what what we have done is that we 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 have we have studied how to fit a second order polynomial model involving two variables and then uh, first we computed we, we, we fitted that model and then uh, we computed the ANOVA table for the full model and then we observed that the model is significant by the F test and then once the model is significant that means all the uh, regression coefficients are not equal to 0, uh, some of them are non-zero uh, and then what we did is that we, we tested the significance of the linear term separately and we also have we also tested the significance of quadratic term and we found that for this particular example both the linear terms and the uh, quadratic terms uh, are significant. So, you cannot remove any term from the from the model. So, the model uh, is uh, quite uh, significant. Uh, so, that is all about the um, second order polynomial fitting involving two variables and uh, now we will solve uh, some problems on orthogonal polynomials. So, here is the problem. So, fit a cubic equation using orthogonal polynomials to the y values, the values are 13, 4, 3, 4, 10 and 22. So, we have 6 observations for y corresponds to uh, the x value minus 2.5 minus 1.5 and so on and you can see that the x values are uh, equally spaced. So, the question is uh, we are asking to fit you a cubic equation. So, is the cubic term needed? If not, what is the best quadratic fit? Okay. So, to solve this problem, uh, first uh, what we have to do is that we have to fit uh, 3 degree polynomial uh, involving I mean using orthogonal polynomial because that is the orthogonal polynomial has some advantage and then we will test uh, the significance of the quadrat uh, uh, significance of the uh, cubic term. Okay. So, I wrote the observations here again. Uh, so, this is my x and y and I have uh, 6 observations and the question say you fit a cubic model. So, basically you have to fit y equal to 
beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta 3 x s cube plus epsilon. You have to fit this model and then we know that you know instead of fitting uh, I mean we know how to use orthogonal polynomial to fit uh, uh, third order polynomial. So, instead of fitting this model we will fit uh, this one. So, this one is uh, uh, this is also uh, third order, but involving orthogonal polynomial. So, this is orthogonal polynomial of order 3, order 2, order 1 and we have 6 observations. So, uh, you know how to compute uh, this orthogonal polynomials for 6 observations. Uh, so, p naught, so here you have p naught x. So, you know that p naught x is always equal to 1 for all x and p 1 x is, uh, is uh, minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, 1, 3, 5. Right. Uh, I hope that you can recall that p 1 x is equal to um, lambda 1 into x minus x i minus x bar by d. Okay. So, here uh, you can check that you know x bar is equal to 3.5. I mean uh, you do not need to consider this x values, you can just replace them by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because they are all equal, uh, equally spaced. So, uh, you can quote them by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, using those values my x bar is equal to 3.5 and then for 1 it is 1 minus 3.5 d is equal to 1 and I have to take lambda equal to 2 to make it integer. So, this is minus 2.5 and then I multiply by 2 to get minus 5. So, this is how you know you have to compute p 1 x and then you see the formula for p 2 x and p 3 x. Generally during the exam you know this uh, table is uh, given. So, you do not need to uh, memorize all these things. So, what I want to do is that suppose well. Uh, so, it says that you fit a uh, third cubic equation and uh, then you know what is this uh, alpha, how to estimate this alpha. We know that alpha naught hat is equal to y bar and uh, alpha j hat is equal to p j x i into y i by p j x i square. So, you know everything. So, if you want to say compute alpha 1 hat, if, if you had you have p 1 x, you know y. So, you can compute uh, uh, alpha 1 hat and similarly alpha 2 hat and alpha 3 hat. So, that is not a problem. Now, uh, the problem says that you know you test uh, the significance of the problem says that uh, is the cubic term needed. So, that means, uh, you have to test uh, the hypothesis that h naught alpha 3 equal to 0 against the h 1 that uh, alpha 3 is not equal to 0. Okay. So, how to do that? I, I think that you, you first uh, uh, compute the ANOVA table for this one and then come back to uh, come back for testing this because anyway you have to uh, estimate the SS uh, residual. So, let me uh, construct the ANOVA table first. For that, uh, I need uh, SS uh, regression due to alpha 1. So, that one is uh, nothing but 
alpha 1 hat summation y i p 1 x i. So, you can compute you know alpha 1 hat and uh, you know y i's you know p 1 x i. So, you can check that this one is 58.51 with the degree of freedom of course, 1. Similarly, you can compute S S regression due to alpha 2. That means, the contribution of the quadratic term the alpha 2 x square right uh, in the in the regression model. Uh, so, that is alpha 2 hat into y i p 2 x i this one is nothing but uh, 2 1 0 that you can check with degree of freedom 1 and then S S regression due to alpha 3 this we need because we need to test the hypothesis that alpha 3 equal to 0 uh, against alpha 3 not equal to 0 that is alpha 3 hat summation y i p 3 x i right. So, this one is very small. So, uh, this uh, clearly uh, of course, we will test it formally, but it clearly says that the significance of alpha 3 is uh, negligible okay, with the degree of freedom 1. So, uh, if you add this uh, 3 S S regression that will be the S S regression total S S regression right. And uh, I mean what I mean is that S S regression for the cubic model involving orthogonal polynomial is nothing but S S regression is S S regression due to alpha 1 plus S S regression due to alpha 2 plus S S regression due to alpha 3. Right? And then you compute uh, SS total and uh, then SS residual, uh, sorry, SS residual uh, can be obtained from that SS total minus SS regression that you can check that uh, this SS residual is 207.70 with uh, degree of freedom. Uh, why it is true? Because, because we have four parameters in the model. So, four parameters mean four restriction on the residuals and uh, there are total six residuals and you have four restrictions. So, that means, uh, only two you can choose independently and you, know, you have the freedom of choosing two and the other four has have to be chosen in such a way that the four restrictions are um, are satisfied. So, that is why the S S uh, residual has a degree of freedom 2. Now, uh, I have the S S residual. So, I can compute the F statistic to test this hypothesis alpha 3 equal to 0. So, my F statistics is f is s s regression due to alpha 3 that is mean the contribution of cubic term in total s s regression by its degree of freedom is equal to 1 by s s residual divided by its degree of freedom that is m s residual basically. So, this one is nothing but 0 0.006 by 1 and uh, S is residually computed at that is 207.7 by 2 which is equal to which is very small but 0 0.00057 000 and uh, I mean this clearly says that 
alpha 3 is is not significant. Uh, so, still uh, let me find the value of tabulated f uh, that tabulated f uh, 0 0.05 with degree of freedom 1 and 2 that is uh, 18.51. So, this one is clearly uh, very small very smaller than 18.51. So, this F test uh, implies that you no know, H naught is accepted. That means, alpha 3 can be can be 0 in the model. So, which in other words says that uh, alpha 3 is is not significant. So, I can say here that uh, alpha 3 is not significant. Okay. So, uh, not significance mean I can go for the model y equal to uh, alpha naught hat plus alpha 1 hat p 1 x plus alpha 2 hat p 2 x. I can ignore the uh, cubic term and finally, you can check that uh, this is y hat is equal to 4.273 plus 1.8286 x plus 2.3750 x square. See, you know, this is not alpha 1 hat. What 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 uh, we have done here is that you know you find alpha naught, alpha one hat, and alpha two hat, and then also you replace this, uh, you write this equation in terms of the in terms of x. Here it is in terms of the orthogonal polynomial, so you have to replace this p one x by uh, by that uh, p one x is equal to lambda one uh, x minus x bar by d. So you, you replace here lambda is equal to two. Uh, d equal to 1 and so finally, you, you, ha you have to get this equation in terms of uh, x. Well, so the next problem is uh, it says that, so this is the original problem. So, we uh, tested the third order term and we, we found that the alpha 3 is not significant and uh, we found the best quadratic fit. Now, uh, if the model say this is a third order polynomial had been fitted directly, how would the extra sum of squares uh, S S regression due to beta 1 given beta naught which is equal to 58.51 and S S regression due to beta 2 in the presence of beta naught and beta 1, which is equal to 210 in uh, 0.58 and S S regression due to beta 3 in the presence of beta naught, beta 1 and beta 2. How these things are related to the sum of square for the first second and third order orthogonal polynomial. So, you understand the problem. So, so what we have done is that we have fitted a uh, third order polynomial in terms of using orthogonal polynomials. Now, you can without using the orthogonal polynomial you can use uh, you can fit this model also and then the S S regression you have the SS regression uh, due to beta 1 in the presence of beta naught, which is equal to 58.51. How this one is related to the SS regression of the first order polynomial involving orthogonal polynomials. Okay. So, I hope you have 
understood the problem. Now, if you see that this one is 58.51 and whatever we computed before that S s regression due to alpha 1 is also 58.51. Okay? So, the S s regression for the model y equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 p 1 x, the S s regression due to this model is same as S s regression due to the model beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon plus epsilon, because S s regression due to this model is nothing but S s regression due to alpha 1 okay? and S s regression due to this model is nothing but S s regression due to beta 1 in the presence of beta naught. Now, uh, see uh, the question says how now this one is related, how S s regression due to beta 2 in the presence of beta naught and beta 1 that is 2 1 naught 0.58, how this is related to uh, the sum of square for second order orthogonal polynomials. Okay? Now, we have to check. So, these two quantities are same, this is same as basically S s regression due to beta 2 in the presence of beta naught and beta 1, which is same as S s regression due to alpha 2. So, what I want to, uh, the message I want to give here is that, now I am talking about a model in uh, of order 2, let me write down that y equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 p 1 x plus alpha 2 p 2 x. So, this is a second order model involving orthogonal polynomials plus epsilon and let me write the sim the polynomial third order sorry second order polynomial and that is beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus epsilon. Now, the contribution of what is this quantity? The contribution of beta 2 in S s regression in the presence of beta naught and beta 1 is same as the contribution of alpha 2 in this model in the presence of alpha naught plus and alpha 1. But you are aware of the fact that you know uh, in case of orthogonal polynomial fitting the S s regression are orthogonal. I mean the S s regression due to alpha 2 does not depend on S s regression due to alpha 1. So, so the S s regression due to alpha 2 is same as S s regression due to alpha 2 in the presence of alpha naught and alpha 1. So, yeah you understand I, I think you have to think uh, about it. Uh, so, that is why you know S s regression due to alpha 2 is same as the S s regression due to beta 2 in the presence of beta naught and beta 1. And similarly, you can you can check that uh, S s regression due to alpha 3 it does not depend on uh, on 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 the other terms right so this is same as s s regression due to beta 2 sorry beta 3 in the presence of beta naught beta 1 beta 2 okay this is same as this one and this is same as s s regression due to alpha 3 right for uh, polynomial fitting using orthogonal polynomials, because S s regression uh, 
uh, in polynomial fitting they are orthogonal also. So, this is same as SS regression due to alpha 3 in the presence of alpha naught, alpha 1 and alpha 2. It, it does not matter you know uh, because the uh, SS regressions uh, in, in, in polynomial fitting using orthogonal polynomials they are independent. Okay, so, uh, that is all for today. Thank you.